Ladies and gentlemen, I am your Planetary Defense Commander, and this is your official 10-day warning. 10 days from now, around April 9th, we're going to be getting a pretty big and pretty nasty storm that will probably contain tornadic elements. So everywhere just south of the Great Lakes states, um, and even some of the Great Lakes states, just letting you know now, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, you guys will be under the gun. And so, just giving you a heads up, because that is what I do here at Thor News. And every single month, beginning of the month, I do a fundraiser to keep Thor News up and running. If you would like to contribute, I got a snail mail, a PayPal, a Venmail, a Cash App, a Patron, and only $1,777 left to go with about five days left. So, if you'd like to make a contribution, I'm back from vacation and will give you my all for the rest of the year. Okay, great. Man, the map is colorful. But if you'll notice up here, this is where the main fire, fire danger is. It's in the middle of the north, USA. And then, just got a bunch of stuff happening down here. And then pink. Weather flow, Chaz is letting us know the enhanced area for today has migrated a bit east, but still marginal at the coast, expecting strong winds and possible hail. Yep, so this little thunderstorm is generating thunderstorms and some small hail in some areas and could possibly spin up a tornado or two, so we'll have to keep our eye on it. And it's going to bring about some flash flooding to some areas as you get quite a bit of rain all the way from Louisiana up into Canada. And if you're feeling a bit grumpy today, it's because we've returned to solar minimum conditions with no sunspots on the sun and the moon is in Scorpio. I don't always like the moon in Scorpio. Something about Scorpio, Scorpionic energy is always kind of stingy. You know what I'm talking about? All right. This is precipitation over the next 48 hours you're seeing potential snow for some place in the northeast places and we'll watch that storm move out and bring rain to most of the east coast rumor has it after that there's not going to be a whole lot of weather for about a week as things kind of cool down but things are always bound to change in between refreshing vaccination site availability and working on UFO video. I will be here monitoring this storm, but if you are in pretty much anywhere in this zone, you could get the possibility of some strong thunder showers and, you know, a tornado can't be totally ruled out, I would say. Speaking of the sun, even though we have no sunspots facing us, we have been getting a bit of activity. We got quite a few players on this map. You get a sun diving comet that hits the sun. It has an effect like a bullet, and then you get Venus down in the lower left. Watch the comet comes in, bang, and then the sun fires out a coronal mass ejection. So people say there's no correlation between sun diving comets and coronal mass ejections, but I totally disagree every single time because it's like every single time we get a sun diving comet, we get some type of a solar flare or a coronal mass ejection. This is brought to us by engineer Irene Quiorez, but that's pretty fascinating, pretty neat, and pretty awesome. So yeah, we're headed towards solar maximum after getting out of a solar minimum, and we should get there and arrive there somewhere around 2025. So expect things to continue to get better with some turbulence in between. Yep, keep an eye on these storms. As Andrew lets us know, we have an intense velocity couplet here. I believe that's an Illinois, question mark. North Carolina had a nasty little supercell with some rotation heading towards New Burr. But, you know, we'll keep it on. Rocky the Soldier was trying to trigger people by saying that North Carolina barbecue is the real Captain America and other states barbecues is the fake Captain America. But, like, dude, I'm from Texas and Texas barbecue is amazing. So, Rocky, we're just going to have to agree to disagree. Erica Palmerio is letting us know we had a double filament eruption on the sun today. The first occurred at high latitudes in the northern hemisphere, close to the central meridian, and could impact Earth. 
The second took place at the northwest limb, which is like the right side of the sun. So you had the one tear off pretty much right there, and then you have this one tear off pretty much right there. And me and Radar Omega and the rest of Weather Twitter are tracking these storms. Yeah, you got a severe thunderstorm watch for Alabama, Florida, and parts of Georgia. Wind gusts, 50 miles, 65 miles per hour possible, but it's, you know, a center for rodeo. Rumor has it, it'll be a warm start to April for the western half of the country. Plenty of temperature records could be broken, though this is always subject to change as well. AccuWeather is saying the start of April may feel more like the start of winter across the southeast with low temperatures in the 20s and 30s. So it's like a story of fire and ice. You know, because Earth is like a McDLT lava lamp type thing. But hey, stay cool, southeast. And it wouldn't be a Thor News broadcast without mention of a volcano doing its thing. And in this is instance, Mount Etna in Italy is still having strombolian activity and it's intensifying here engineer irene Chiores is showing us that filament lift off from earlier whoop zip zap pow are you okay son yeah the sun's okay but here's the filament tearing off and then the sun just kind of gets jiggy with it i guess it's like the sun's losing weight which is probably something the majority of us need to do after your lockdown so that's cool Yo, that's cool. Storm Chaser Nick is, I guess, suggesting that the East is tired of severe weather. But yeah, so even though we have solar minimum conditions, there was a bit of activity in the sun today. Halo CME, the very impressive prominence eruption this morning resulted in a rather modest coronal mass ejection. And there was no flare associated with it. But the CME internal structure was seen for many hours. Alaska C2 data contains Venus, and a sun grazing comet. Yeah, so the sun grazing comet's pretty dang cool. And then Venus down there, you can't really see it that well on this thingy. But uh, sun grazing comets are always neat to me. Bang. And I like to say nobody knows what the sun's going to do next, man. And one thing that's really driving that point home is since 2019, the star Betelgeuse has just been freaking out. Like, imagine if the sun did just drop to like... 80% of its usual brightness for a year or two. Yeah, then I would consider that a grand solar minimum. But our sun is still pretty bright, yo. But who knows, man. The world and the future will be filled with surprises. I know everybody likes to think they have it all figured out. Why don't you compare and contrast their predictions from last year and find out how they did. I know mine were pretty good. But that's why I'm your planetary defense commander. Because I'm, I'm almost pro at this stuff. Okay, great. Dada Boo, the Florida Wavemaster, is pointing out the Atlantic is setting up for one of the most complex patterns he's seen in a while. This is the 12Z Euro at 240. This is 10 days of a North Atlantic blocking high that refuses to let the low pass. Yeah, it's pretty weird. So let's check it out together and find out what he's talking about. Yeah, so watch the lows that will be in the Atlantic. And this is over a projection. This is the GFS over the next 16 days. And you can kind of see the block and high he's talking about that won't let the low go anywhere. And so, and then you get a retrograding subtropical hybrid whatever storm that almost wants to go back into Nova Scotia. But this high pressure system, could it be associated with the Etna volcano? Maybe. Um, yeah, so the Atlantic Ocean activity seems to be going pretty wild, or should be, over the next two weeks. What does this mean? Yeah, I don't know. Doom? No, not really. But it's just weird. And so, you know, we're going to keep an eye on the oceans absolutely as we ease towards hurricane season. Remember, they wanted to move hurricane season up two weeks. And so we will be on the lookout for crazy crap happening leading up into hurricane season, which is now only two months away. So I've only got two months to get cranky weather guy out of retirement. And I only got two months to get into my bikini shape. 
although I don't wear a bikini. I wear a male one piece. They're called trunks. Okay, great. But sometimes I wear a t-shirt if I'm still chubby. It's TMI probably. Okay, great. I am your planetary defense commander trying to get back into the swing of things. I had a pretty good march though. How was your march? Oh yeah, but I do do fundraisers every single month. It turns my life into a game show. It's very exciting. Um, if you'd like to contribute to keep up, up and running, I promise to do my very best to the rest of 2021 because I like to do good. But you can make a snail mail contribution, a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App, a Patron. And I only have $1,777 left. Somebody would like to make the first contribution to get this party started. That would be wonderful. I love y'all. Astro Fight Club, you guys are amazing. I'm getting ready for spring. Are you getting ready for spring? The cherry blossoms are now in full bloom. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Astro Fight Club. Thank you, everyone cool out there. Everybody have a great day. And I'll be talking to y'all soon. And I'm working on a super duper badass UFO series video. Because that is what I like to do. And they're having some type of alien government disclosure sometime in June. So there's a big lead up to it. All right. Everybody stay cool. I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace out.